think I've only tried doing a live stream from a moving car once before. And forgot the lights. In two miles, keep right onto I-10 Eastward. We are headed down to San Diego. Uh, anyway, we just wrapped up an incredible weekend. I hope my mic is working. Let me. I think I can see live chat, guys. So just let me know how the audio is and all that good stuff. Um, it's been a hell of a day, even though it's been a quiet day on YouTube. Um, man, last night was just fantastic outside of La Poubelle. Man, we were having such a good time. And um, the energy was so positive. And there was no trouble. There were no altercations. Um, quite a relief, actually. Uh, but just truly, a really good time. I bet La Poubelle and Francoise Coster would, uh, I bet they really, really hope Scientology would open up its information center on Hollywood Boulevard again so that the protesters would have somewhere else to go <laughs> instead of La Poubelle. Hi everyone. I am, because I'm just sitting here in the car, I'm going to try to keep a, I'm going to try to keep a, a good eye on the live chat and respond to questions if I can. Um, because I'm doing this directly from the YouTube app on the phone and not on StreamYard at a computer, it can be hard to um, hold on to the comments, but I'm going to do my best. Um, let's see, we went out to brunch first thing this morning. We went out to The Waffle, not to be confused with The Waffle House. Uh, it looks the same, it sounds the same, but it is not the same. A whole bunch of us went out. So um, Liz Gale, Liz Ferris, Carrie, of course, Serge and Michael and Laura and DOA uh, and me and Jenna. Uh, there was 12 of us. I'm, I don't know who I'm forgetting. Um, and we had a nice late lunch. Then we went back to Serge's and hung out. Uh, did like a YouTube, YouTube business seminar. <laughs> how to challenge all the YouTube demonetizations that are happening on some of the channels and doing some stuff like that. Okay, I had seen some comments that I wanted to respond to, but now I've lost them. Uh, anyway, so I fly home on Tuesday. Um, had an action-packed day yesterday. Really just had to chill today. My goodness. I mean, that was the most time I have spent walking around outside since I spent a week in bed. So I'm still like getting back up to the level of handling that much physical activity. And um, I mean, it's not like we're working in the coal mines, but standing around and walking around for six and a half hours takes a lot out of you, especially when you spend a week in bed uh, not that long ago. So um, yeah, let me see. I'm trying to catch some of these questions, guys. Trying to catch some of these questions. I, I did hear about that incident um, after we left. We left about 11, I think. I'm pretty sure everyone else left no later than 12. I was just so exhausted. I couldn't, I couldn't even keep on. Um, so we went home and then I heard someone threw a cigarette at streets and the police showed up and they wouldn't take a report. I haven't seen the video. I haven't seen the footage. Um, hard to believe that the police can be so hot and cold on whether they will take a report or arrest somebody for um, uh, a certain type of assault. They seem just inconsistent on it. Um, but huge disappointment there. But I haven't seen, we've been so busy today, I haven't even gone on on the channels and tried to look for the videos or the recap footage or maybe Natalie did a video about it. I just haven't even, haven't even seen. Uh, let me see, I'm gonna scroll back. I'm gonna try not to be in a rush here, guys. We got about a, 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 at least a 90 minute drive ahead of us. And you know me, I always kinda wanna be in a rush, but I'm gonna force myself to slow down here a bit. Uh, yeah, could you guys tell how much fun we were having last night in the stream? And DOA, DOA is such a, a, breath, a breath of fresh air. Is that what a breath of fresh air? Um, he's just, I just love what he does and, and how he does it. And he's, he's out there all night on his hands and knees with the chalk making these amazing, uh, these amazing things on the sidewalk. I mean, he's really dedicated to what he does. People are asking if I'm in Florida. No, 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 we are um, just leaving LA, uh, gonna head down to San Diego for the next day and then flying home to Florida on Tuesday morning. Okay, I'm looking through the chat, guys. This is me trying to be uh, patient and calm. 
uh, Perth Scientology Audit says, Aaron, been worried about you. Hope you're all good. Uh, I assume you're saying that just because I haven't done any streams today. <laughs> I brought my phone and my, um, what is this called? My gimbal and my microphone. I brought it all to brunch thinking, wouldn't it be fun if we live streamed brunch? You know, I liked watching the squad when they were eating at Denny's the other night. It sounds good in theory, but it just feels so impersonal to show up to brunch and stick a camera on the table and expect everyone to be natural, relaxed, and, and comfortable. So I just didn't do it. And then I thought, for sure, we're going to go back to Surge's and do a live stream. And we just got so caught up talking to one another about, you know, stuff that's really, I guess, more on the private side than the live stream side. So, yes, everything's good. Uh, everything is good. <laughs> just because I didn't do anything today. But now that's why I'm trying to take my time now and do this video now, guys, because what am I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a car for the next 90 minutes. This is, this is not a perfect time to do a little bit of a live Q&A, then I don't know what is. Okay, let's see, I see a question from Big Z, 1979. When is the next gathering in downtown Clearwater? Big Z, thank you for the question. If by gathering, you just mean going downtown and doing the live stream, the live streaming around the flag land base, uh, that's been happening every night, even if I'm not down there. Clearwater George, surrounded by Scientology, is down there. Lori Plays is down there. Farrell Sherrill is down there. SPIT Clearwater is down there. Um, if you, if, so if that's what you mean, that has been continuing and anyone can show up any night. I'm probably going to get back out there this week. Uh, if you mean any other kind of a get-together, I kind of shy away from trying to organize get-togethers these days. Uh, there's just kind of a lot of potential downside and not a lot of potential upside. And um, it's not something I get really, really excited about, organizing things like that. So if that's what you mean, I don't have a good answer for you. Oh, is Pearl Snappy in the chat? Lori Play says, Pearl Snappy, we're also proud of, proud of all your work, especially this past week. You rocked Davy's world and not in a good way. Yeah, I got so many messages all weekend long about uh, Pearl Snappy and the other guys out there in Austin. Danny, Leah, who made the road trip out there from L.A. Uh, you guys rocked. Pearl Snappy, what you're doing out there is absolutely incredible. And um, I think other people who are looking to pick this up in other cities where there's Scientology organizations uh, should definitely look at what Pearl Snappy is doing and, and figure out if, uh, if that's right for you. There's probably many ways to do all this, but Pearl Snappy's, she's really kicking butt. Okay, let's see. Um, also, guys, because I'm doing this from YouTube, I can't actually bring the comments up on the stream like I could if I was doing this through StreamYard. So bear with me here. I'm going to try to read them out and give the person who asked the question uh, a shout out. People are saying, uh, Zoltan Tamasi says, Oi, DOA is a mess. DOA is a mess. He's a beautiful mess. And uh, he's our mess. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. I consider DOA a, a valuable contributor to everything that's going on here. And uh, the world's messy, guys. I don't, I don't mind people who are messy. I'm a little messy myself, if you haven't noticed, guys. <laughs> um, oh, Abigail. Abigail says, why would you think that, Aaron? Reese did a live stream lunch. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not um, criticizing live stream lunches. I would have loved to do it. Um, it's really more whether everyone else expected that that's what was going to happen. Uh, I actually really enjoy watching live streams of people doing just you know, and, and I mean, any conversation is a conversation that's potentially worth live streaming. Um, I just, I'm just saying in the moment, in that moment at that time, it never felt like the right time to be like, okay guys, now I'm turning on my phone. <laughs> because honestly, let's be real, there's some things that, there's probably some conversations you'd rather just not have with, you know, the world listening. There's some conversations you just want to have with your friends. So that's all. It just, it just felt like that kind of lunch. That's really what I meant. Uh, thank you, Abigail. Appreciate it. I guess I'll scroll with my other finger so you guys don't have to see it covering the camera all the time. Ruth Ann McCallop says, did you have any flashbacks 
to your time in SCO. Oh, in the Sea Org? Uh, being there on L. Ron Hubbard Way. You know, um, uh, I mean, flashbacks sound like a negative thing. Like, uh, being in the Sea Org for me was not a traumatic experience. Uh, it was not a good experience. It was not a happy experience, but it was not traumatic. So in that sense, I wouldn't be having flashbacks. Um, but I'll tell you, the first time I went on L. L. Ron Hubbard Way, I was scared to be there. And not really scared like, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? Scared like, still feeling like as a Scientologist, in a, it, uh, um, it, it, from a Scientology mindset, I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. I knew I wasn't allowed to be there. But that's the Scientology mindset. Because the truth is, you are allowed to be there. It's a public street. Scientology doesn't own L. Ron Hubbard Way. I know Sea Org members think that they do, but they don't. They do not own L. Ron Hubbard Way. So anyway, the, the first time I was going to L. Ron Hubbard Way, which was not this trip, it would have been one or two or three trips ago. Yeah, I was nervous. I wouldn't call it a flashback though, just, just nervous. And honestly, when you see, well, for example, today, no, not today, yesterday. Yesterday when I was on L. Ron Hubbard Way and I was delivering that Amazon package to the security guard, I know that there are gonna be people who are for, put off at how I talk to that security guard, you know? Um, or they think, oh, you should be nice to them, you should be polite, you should be proper. I gotta be honest, part of talking to them in a way that is different than the respect you had to give them in the Sea Org, it's a little cathartic, not gonna lie. Because those Sea Org members think they own the street, they think they own the city, they think they own you, they think their own laws are the only laws that matter. And sometimes telling him to get lost bum <laughs> is just the kind of thing you're not normally allowed to say to a Sea Org security guard if you're a Scientologist. And it just feels kind of good to talk to him like the piece of shit bum that he is. <laughs> Look, I'm sure as a human being, he's probably a good guy. And we'd probably like each other in the, real, in the real world. But as a Sea Org member, working for uh, the cult, um, he is the job that he's doing. That's all I'll say. That, that, that's what I see him as. I see him as the uh, senior HCO security guard uh, doing Phaeton's work. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was talking about that, but that's okay. Oh, the PTSD stuff. Oh, no, no, someone said flashbacks. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's what I have to say about that. Okay. Scrolling through the live chat. Okay. Here's one. What is this? Um, Will says L Ron thumbs down, a, a Ron thumbs up. Well, thank you for that. Will. much appreciated. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, Island Lady says, a Aaron was done after that last piece of pizza after the milkshake. I wanted more of that pizza, but I felt weird asking that guy to keep giving me some. <laughs> he was holding onto that pizza and he was holding it on his hip like it was a little baby. And I'm like, I feel bad asking that guy for more pizza. But I'll tell you, when he opened that box, that was almost a full pizza. There was still a, a full pizza in there. And I had one slice and after I had that one slice, I wanted more pizza so bad, but I just couldn't bring myself to ask. And, um, and I was getting tired of it. The milkshake was amazing. Um, you know, the fact that uh, the streamers have basically decided to make a friend out of that restaurant by buying ice cream there for everyone every night is so brilliant. It's the kind of stuff, it's the kind of common sense, good natured stuff that Scientology should be doing in the community to make friends in the community if they could think about it. They'd rather give $25,000 to the LAPD than, you know, <laughs> give a few hundred dollars to local businesses every now and then um, just to patronize them for goodwill. But uh, yeah, all right. I'm trying not to stick my finger in front of that camera all the time. Crystal says, oh, I just lost it. Something about we all just served a brunch together, so. Thank you for that, Crystal. Uh, let's see. Oh, Linky Lou says, did you get to spend time with Marisa? Was surprised to see her pop out of the car. Yes. Well, that's one of the things we did last night. 
between when we left L. Ron Hubbard Way and when we went to La Poubelle. Uh, a whole mess of us, I, there must have been at least 30 of us, went over to the Airbnb where the out-of-town visitors were staying and we just chilled and had food and had some beers and chatted and had some fun uh, for a few hours over at the Airbnb. Um, Serge did a model auditing session demonstration up in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which I think was live streamed on a couple channels, maybe a few channels. I think Confident Chris and I think LA Cam and I think Jessica streamed Serge's model auditing session demo. And, um, and I'm mentioning all this because Marisa came to the Airbnb as well and we got a chance to hang. I haven't seen Marisa in person uh, maybe ever, to be honest, but we haven't spoken. We spoke a few months ago and before that it was many, many years. So yeah, I don't think Marisa and I had ever hung out in person before. And I didn't know she was coming. <laughs> and she drove six hours to get there. And, um, and they were staying overnight as well. So yeah, we got to hang and chat and that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Pearl Snappy, oh, there she is. Pearl Snappy says, um, where, where to go? She goes, hope you heard the, hey Dave. Oh, damn it, why did it just appear? That was a super chat as well and it just appeared. Did you give him a good, hey Dave, Pearl Snappy? <laughs> I've got to find that. Pearl Snappy, if, if you email me a link to the live stream with the timestamp of where you did that, I want to do a, a clip of that. I'll do a video promoting your video. That would be amazing. Okay, let's see. Spirited Dragonfly says hello again from Montana. Hello in Montana. Okay, I've got to perfect my scroll game here. Sorry guys, I'm doing my best. Uh-oh, I'm accidentally clicking the wrong thing. Oh, Summer Savage says, question, which business is a front group for Scientology in Greenville, South Carolina? Summer, I wonder if you're talking about um, the company that hired me to work for them in, in South Carolina. Um, the truth is there's no Scientology in South Carolina. And the company that hired me, so I used to work in one of these wise consulting business front groups. And um, there was a, a large physical therapy company that signed up as a client with that consulting company. And they had 17 clinics, physical therapy clinics. They had seven, they had uh, uh, five in Greenville, South Carolina, two in Spartanburg, and they had 10 clinics out in the Vail Valley of Colorado between Denver and Vail. And um, so they had 17 clinics and they basically hired me away from the consulting company to go work for them to help them implement uh, the courses that they were studying. But believe it or not, none of them were Scientologists. None of the people who worked for them were Scientologists. None of them ever did any Scientology consulting, ever joined Scientology in any way. So um, there is no business front group for Scientology in Greenville, South Carolina. And, uh, and normally I'd love to mention the company because I'd like to give them a shout out, but the truth is they would probably rather the world didn't know that they had ever signed up with a Scientology business consulting group. So I, and, and they're really nice people, so I just, I just won't name them if you don't mind. Okay, we have the boobologist. I love it. It's one of the best kinds of ologists. Says Chicago Scientology Audit is saying he needs help for the opening on March 3rd out there just spreading the word. Well, Boobologist, I'm wondering if he needs help getting his subscribers up to over 50, or does he need help like he needs other people out there streaming with him? Uh, no matter which one it is that he needs, I would be happy to try to help out with that. So uh, I'll do what I can, just let me know. All right. Okay, guys, I'm scrolling up, looking for a question. 
Okay, Joshua Cox is saying, not including David Miscavige, who would shock you if they left Scientology? And would you help them? I mean, I gotta be honest, I don't think there's anyone leaving Scientology who would be denied help if they needed the help and wanted the help. Like, there's literally no one who's just been so despicable that if they actually needed the help and wanted the help, they wouldn't get the help. It just, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Um, determining whether someone's gonna get help, if you're talking about from a foundation perspective, is, is the person for real? Um, is their story legitimate? And do they genuinely need the help? That's it. That's all that goes into it. Okay, so let me try to answer the question though. Um, who would I be shocked? Shocked, shocked, shocked. Uh, on a personal level, um, my good friend, Daniel Presta. If he left Scientology, I'd be shocked only because he's been in for so long. Now. He's had so much opportunity to leave that eventually you get to form. Everyone who was already, you know, people. <laughs> if you were going to leave because of anything all of us have already said, you'd have already left. <laughs> I mean, Everyone who's left at one point was a core believer. But now you're getting um, uh, a, an SP-resistant strain of Sea Org member. <laughs> They've been exposed to 20 years or 15 years of, uh, you know, uh, Leah Remini, uh, Mike Rinder, years of SPTV, uh, the documentaries, uh, you know, the Aftermath show, uh, 20 books from, you know, well-known former Scientologists, all this kind of stuff. So we're really left with Sea Org members who, despite all of that, have still decided they'd rather stay. And, um, and it's going to take something pushing those people beyond their own personal breaking point to get them to be like, I don't want to be here anymore. What are my options? So for me, Daniel Presta is someone I would love to see leave, and I would be pleasantly shocked if he did. Um, you know, he's not a, a famous name in Scientology, but if, if you're in L.A. or in the Sea Org in L.A., you probably know who Daniel Presta is. Um, but when you say shocked, I mean, there's just, there's just so many names I could give you. You know, I'd be shocked if Ray Midoff left. I'd be shocked if Heber, I mean, Heber's in a nursing home right now, but Heber Jench, you know, if he left, I'd be shocked, pleasantly shocked. Um, hold on. I think my phone's a little crooked. Give me a sec, guys. Boom. Um, you know, if Guillaume Serve left, I'd be pleasantly shocked, happy. But these are also people who wouldn't need help. Um, these, uh, theoretically, these are people who really wouldn't need help, so they wouldn't ask for it, but if they asked for it and they needed it, they would get it. You know, look, if Greg, what's his name? Um, what is his name? Greg Wilhair. If Greg Wilhair left, I'd be shocked. Um, if Mark Yeager left, I'd be shocked. Uh, these are the people who, for me, were the big names in Scientology. If Angie, no, not Angie, what's the, um, Sue, Sue Rathbun, Sue Wilhair, I forget. All, there's a whole lot of RTC reps that I knew that, you know, if they, um, if they left, I would be shocked. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I answered that question. All right, let's see, scrolling up, looking for a, looking for a fresh one. Oh, wow, does this go all the way up? Oh, wow. Okay, let me see. I've got to scroll down because otherwise they disappear on me too fast. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Philosophy says, I would like to see Aaron interview Marisa. Yeah, I think we could do that. We were talking about doing that a little while ago and then we just sort of stopped talking about it. So yeah, we could definitely do that. Oh, Violet says, can you talk about Tori being there? Oh, that was a really nice surprise. I say surprise in general. I knew she was coming. She and I had spoken and been talking about it for a few days. Um, you know, Tori, Tori's just so much fun. She's such a child at heart. <laughs> she was being such a little troublemaker there on LRH way. Uh, and, you know, you know, oh, there was a point when um, we were all huddling together and she was kind of um, giving a bit of a speech and my audio cut out during that speech. I'm gonna go back to, I think, Confident Chris's live stream and pull his audio and um, put it over my video and recut a clip because 
she was kind of opining on how far things have come. Where, you know, back in the day, you could go onto L. Ron Hubbard Way, and if you even stepped one foot onto the parking lot, they'd have security guards just out there hounding you, threatening you, harassing you, intimidating you, trying to get in your face. And she goes, look, look at what, look at what we're doing here. These guys, these guys can't do any of that anymore. You know, Tori sat there and sat on Scientology's little retaining wall uh, inside the perimeter of the parking lot and sat there for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. The security guard came out and told her she was trespassing and she needed to leave. And she just says, sorry, I'm tired. I had to sit down. I'm old. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> he couldn't do anything about it. I mean, technically, he could have called the police, but he didn't. He didn't even call the police. And, uh, yeah, she's like, look, we've come so far. She goes, and it's because, of, it's because of the streamers, it's because of the live streams, it's because of the big audience. Uh, it's really turned the tables on these guys and their tactics and what they can get away with. And uh, it was really cool hearing that from her. Uh, DDT, oh, DDT Shoots says, just a shout out in support of all the protesters and the SPTV team. Go AA Ron. Thank you, DDT Shoots. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see. I think I missed this one here. How do I do this? How do I do this? Wait, don't go away. Don't go away. Okay, whenever Farley, whenever Farley says, I was in Scientology for most a year. Then they told me they could cure my dyslexia, but I left because they were trying to separate from separate me from my family. Thank you. Love the work you do. Thank you. Thank you, whenever Farley. You know, curing people's dyslexia is something Tom Cruise tried to normalize by saying Scientology had cured his dyslexia. I can promise you Scientology ain't curing no one's dyslexia. You can also tell little Tommy's story was a little BS because he said that in school they tried to put him on drugs for his dyslexia. You do not get put on drugs for dyslexia. <laughs> So I question um, Tom's story. That is something I'll just will say. Scientology can cure dyslexia. Just ask little Tommy Cruz. Lena Sewell says, I would love to help coordinating and getting support to protest at an org in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, I like that idea. I could be mistaken, but I believe the org in Florence, Kentucky is actually the Cincinnati org, is what Scientologists call the Cincinnati org. Or maybe they've started calling it um, the org of... Church of Scientology of Central Ohio or, or something like this. But um, yeah, I will do anything I can to help support getting more protesters out there to the org in Florence, Kentucky. Just let me know what you need. Lena, you can um, uh, email me at growinguppinscientology at gmail.com. So there you go. There you go. All right. I'm scrolling up, guys. Uh, Robert Johnson asks, question, is there an organization in Wyoming? Robert, thank you for the question. Uh, Wyoming has been marked safe from Scientology. There is no Scientology that I'm aware of in Wyoming. There's definitely not an org. Um, if there's a mission, it doesn't even count. Don't even worry about it. So the answer is no. You guys are safe. Praise Zenu. All right, let me see here. Bison, 5360. Good to see you, Bison. Haven't seen you in a bit. Pearl Snappy, great job. She found little Davey. Too bad Leah's lawyers could not serve papers there to Davey. Bison, the good news is Leah's lawyers have already served David Miscavige. He has accepted service officially in the uh, Leah Remini's lawsuit. In fact, that's one of the reasons that, um, that is one of the reasons why Miscavige was comfortable going to this ribbon yanking event is because no one's trying to serve him anymore. He's already been served in the outstanding lawsuits. So that is good. Um, oh, Confident Chris in the chat. I, at least I see people talking about Confident Chris. I don't actually see him yet, but hey, good to see you, Confident Chris. I can tell you there. I can feel it. Okay. Jersey Janet says, question. I'm going to be auditing the Scientology org in New York City next week. Do you think it would be better to go to the org or the Celebrity Center? 
Jersey Janet, unfortunately on my phone, it only lets me read that far into the comments. If you had, it looks like there's something else there that I can't see. So apologies for that. Um, the main church of Scientology right off of Central, not Central Park, is that no, Times Square is better than the Celebrity Center. There's not gonna be anybody at the Celebrity Center. There's like two staff members there. So go to the main one and uh, that's what's gonna work out best for you, I promise. Uh, Paula D. Golden says, question, is there any Scientology in Idaho? No, you've been marked safe from Scientology in Idaho. Praise Zenu. <laughs> uh, Lord Kiss Freak says, question, Aaron, any updates on Patrick Perry's court case for your assault? I have not heard any updates. There was supposed to be a hearing two Fridays ago in Patrick Perry's case. I honestly haven't even taken the time to look up his case number and look up the docket and see what the result of the hearing was. And no one has sent me any information either. There's probably three people I could call and ask to get this information and I just haven't done it. So I don't have the info, but there should be some info. I believe it was just an arraignment. And I can't even tell you that I know what happens at an arraignment. I, is that where they make the charges official? I don't truly know. Um, I'm going to try to get the info, though, because I really do want to do a video about it. So we will see. Oh, okay. I'm scrolling up again. for me for my big fingers to press the right buttons here. All right, bear with me, guys. Suprav. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss Super Chats, guys. It just seems like the right thing to do, but the system's kind of giving me a hard time here. Suprav, good for you guys. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you very, very, very much. Okay. You guys know all this dead air is killing me, but that's okay. I'm trying to take my time. Lorena Gone says Danny and Leah did a great job at Texas. They sure did. I was, uh, I, was, I was disappointed that didn't get a chance to see Danny and Leah here in L.A., but they were off doing great work in Austin. So, uh, yeah. Here we go. Barry Snyder says, Aaron, please review the streams of the squirrels getting majorly harassed on a nightly basis along L. Ron Hubbard Way in the wee hours since you've been ill. Um, Barry, I've actually, I've actually been doing quite a bit of that. Um, uh, last, this past week um, covered a lot of stuff covered Laura getting assaulted covered Streets getting assaulted covered DOA getting assaulted um, covered a bunch of the people doing the harassing of the protesters getting arrested uh, and I'll definitely keep doing that because it's really good to have everyone see what's going on okay dun, dun, dun. Janice Haldeman says, love how you are all a family bigger than the existing Scientology membership. <laughs> yes. You know, I put a list together today of every channel that I could think of. I went through my subscription list. I asked other people for input on this. Every channel I could think of of a former Scientologist who posts about Scientology. And then I put a list together of every channel I could think of, of someone who was never in Scientology, but has a channel that posts about Scientology. And I came up with no less than 40 channels of former Scientologists 
120 channels of people who had not been Scientologists. That's 50 channels doing Scientology content. And um, that is absolutely incredible. And the fact that when you Google Scientology, you're just as likely to get results from former members or people who've never been in, but who are doing videos exposing the cultish aspects of Scientology, the destructive policies and practices, the destruction of families, the bankrupting of its members. You're just as likely to find that content as you are to find Scientology's own propaganda. And uh, that's what I think SPTV is really all about. Having the word on Scientology coming from the former members and from the non-Scientologists who in many cases, uh, due to the confidential nature of a lot of Scientology, in many cases, people who've never been in Scientology actually know more about what Scientology is, in some cases, than Scientologists in a weird way. So, something to consider. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Scrolling up, looking for more questions. Oh, 40 plus 20 is 60. Sorry, guys, I messed up. <laughs> 40 plus 20 is 60. It is, in fact, not 50. Did you know that? 40 plus 20 is 60. So, yes. Sorry, guys. You know it's not my strong suit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, hold on, I'm scrolling up, scrolling up. Oh, everyone's correcting me on my math. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Anita Card says, I want to know how the honeycomb shake was. It sounds amazing. Oh, I thought you said you want to know how much it was. Uh, by the way, it was about 10 bucks. Not bad for a shake. And um, it was absolutely amazing. It was incredible. And it had the whipped cream on top, so that was good. Uh, someone says, if anyone goes to the Bay Area ones, I would go. Um, yes. I do believe there are people planning on going out in the San Francisco area. And uh, I also have another note that I have been trying to keep updated whenever I get new emails. I'm trying to keep a list for myself of what channels are active in which cities. Because when, I'd like to be able to talk about that on some streams. Like, hey, in this city, we've got these three or four channels out there um, and, and, and suggest that people subscribe. I might do a whole video just promoting all of the channels that are streaming in the different cities. That would be a lot of fun for me. Okay, JD from Philly says, question, did you enjoy being on Breaking Points? I've had so many people mention the Breaking Points interview to me this weekend. Yeah, I recorded that interview uh, two or three weeks ago, and um, it was a really good chat. I, I love when people have really um, sincere, genuine, intelligent questions about Scientology. And they don't just ask stupid things about Tom Cruise or whatever. Um, and I forget the name of the gentleman that I spoke to on Breaking Points. It wasn't uh, Crystal, and it wasn't S Sager. It wasn't Sager, and it wasn't Crystal. It was one of the other guys who has a segment on breaking points. And, um, and he published our interview uh, a few days ago. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it, people say, did you have a good time? I mean, I, you, I, I talk about Scientology, it's, it's what I do. Um, so it wasn't a good time or not a good time, but it was a good conversation. I, I like doing it and I would gladly do it again. So thank you for that question. Uh, Iced Nanya says the memorial that you guys did yesterday was beautiful and moving. I felt honored you all shared it with us. Uh, that was it was really incredible and totally unexpected. Um, I knew I knew that Liz had something planned. Uh, it was described to me as an art project, so I didn't did not have any idea that that is going to be what it was. It was incredible. Uh, the amount of work that she put into pulling that scroll together, putting all those names down, um, that was really really something. And um, yeah, I was being a bit of a goofball in the beginning because I didn't really know what it was we were doing. <laughs> and I had to go to the bathroom, something fierce. <laughs> so I was being a bit of a clown, but then I realized what was actually happening. And I uh, decided to be a little more serious. Uh, TB says, I cannot understand why the things Scientology does to children are legal. 
Yeah. Yes, it should be totally illegal for a minor to participate in an auditing session. It should be totally illegal for a minor to conduct an auditing session on other minors or on adults. Um, there's a lot of things that should be illegal and for various reasons are not. Uh, and I'm not particularly sure if it's even possible in the U.S. to ever bring about laws that would prevent kids from participating. I, I would, meaning I would like to believe that it could be possible, but I don't know that it's possible. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I believe, I, I'm holding out hope that there's some ways to get some sort of legislation that would prevent a minor from conducting an auditing session on an adult. At least, at least that. Um, but yeah, it's maddening. It is, it is absolutely abuse. Oh, oh yes, Candace said, what about those in different countries? Canadian side needs help, that's for sure. Oh, Candace, all, all other countries are included in everything I just said. So, you know, I'd like to have a list of streamers in Vancouver, in Toronto, in Quebec City. I'd like to have streamers in uh, Munich, Berlin, Dusseldorf, Hamburg, Paris, Barcelona, Madrid, Malmo, um, Milan. Uh, there's actually a whole bunch of Italian orgs. What are the other ones? Roma, Padova. Um, there's, a, there's an org in Vienna, I believe. Uh, there's an org in Switzerland. What's the main city in Switzerland? I forget. What is it? Basel? No, where's the Oregon? Where's the Oregon Switzerland? Oh, I forget. Anyway, yeah, and, and this isn't ever, this list of streamers that I'm talking about, streamers in cities, it's not something I'm going to like have posted on my channel. Uh, it's going to be something I just keep for myself, for my own reference. And then, like I said, maybe every now and then I'll do a video plugging all the streamers in all the cities, maybe mentioning some cities that maybe some of the bigger Scientology cities that we still need streamers for. Guys, we definitely need streamers in Denmark. Um, did you guys know Denmark is actually the hub of Scientology in Europe, um, in Copenhagen? We need, we need streamers in Copenhagen. We need a lot of streamers in Copenhagen. Uh, and, um, oh, oh, Sydney. Uh, Sydney, Australia, Perth, Australia, Adelaide, Brisbane. Uh, those have Scientology organizations. Would be awesome to have streamers in those cities. Um, uh, there's not really any Scientology in India. There's no Scientology in China. I would love to have streamers in Tokyo. Love to have some streamers in Taiwan. Uh, you know, um, I haven't mentioned the Swedish orgs, and the, the, I think there's an org in Finland as, as well. But guys, we could really have a, a pretty major worldwide streaming operation, um, and it would just be amazing. It would be absolutely awesome. All right, let's see. What else we got? Scrolling up. Zoltan Tamasi, can you talk about the difference between a mission and between missions and church. Zoltan, I think what you mean is the difference between a Scientology mission and a Scientology organization. So a Scientology organization is run by the mother church. Scientology owns the building. Um, <clears throat> you, you normally would never see one of those orgs close ever for any reason. They're open seven days a week. They're open on the weekends from 9 a.m. at night to, to 10 at night. On the weekends, they're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And with almost very few exceptions, they will never close for any reason. A Scientology, oh, and, and, and you can do all of the non-confidential auditing in Scientology at those organizations, and you can do professional auditor training up to the level of class five graduate. A Scientology mission is privately owned. It's not owned by the mother church. It's owned by a Scientologist. And they pay royalties, they pay certain fees to management to exist. Um, they open and close all the time. They're not open seven days a week. They're not open from nine at night to 10 at night, nine in the morning to 10 at night. They're open select hours, select days. Uh, the, the, the Scientologist who owns the mission is purely responsible for paying the rent and bringing in money and selling auditing and um, recruiting staff and missions close all the time all the time because they're privately owned it's not Scientology's job to keep missions open it is Scientology's job to keep the orgs open so thank you for the question oh let's see Carrie 
Chaitlane, Chait, Chaitlane, Chatlane is saying, Aaron, question, which is the best to go in Louisiana? I want to go get footage for all. Is there a real org in Louisiana or is it just the Baton Rouge mission? I'm drawing a blank on this one. Do you? Is there ever an org in Louisiana that you know of? No? I think whatever's in Baton Rouge, whatever Scientology entity is in Baton Rouge is, I think, the only entity in Louisiana. Who is it that worked there? Marcus Sawyer? Marcus Sawyer worked at the Baton Rouge mission, right? There's a few different people I've spoken to who worked in Louisiana. And um, I'm forgetting... I'm forgetting the name of the other person that I spoke to. But anyway, that's the best answer I've got for the moment. All right, let's see. Hmm. Motherhood to menopause says, how far south other than Florida is Scientology? Meaning Georgia, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, South Carolina. Okay. In Georgia, there's an org in Atlanta, and that's the only one in Georgia that I'm aware of. Um, let me see. In Nashville, in Tennessee, there's one in Nashville, and that's the only one I'm aware of. And there might there used to be a Nashville org and a Celebrity Center in Nashville. I'm not sure if they're combined these days or if they're still two separate organizations. In Arkansas, I'm not aware of I'm not aware from memory of any Scientology organizations in Arkansas. In Mississippi, I'm not aware of any organizations in Mississippi. In South Carolina. I'm not aware of any organizations in South Carolina. Um, there, half, of the, half of the states in the U.S. have no Scientology organizations in them. Pretty incredible, right, guys? And yet they still convince their members that they're the fastest growing religion on earth. They don't even have organizations in every U.S. state. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. All right. Scrolling up. Uh, here we go. Um, at Acer211 says there's an organ in South Africa where Masterson's buddy is likely hiding. Yeah, there's actually several orgs in South Africa. And there's a Sea Org. There's a big Sea Org base in South Africa. And Kiliami Castle is, I think, how you pronounce it, but I'm not totally sure. Um, I'm going to forget the names of all the orgs in South Africa, but there's Joburg, Johannesburg, there's Johannesburg North, and there's, I think there's like two other orgs in South Africa, actually. How am I going to say this? Who, who in the live chat remembers the cities in South Africa? Um, Cape Town. There's an org in Cape Town. And Joburg, Joburg North, Cape Town. And I feel like there's still one more in addition to the Sea Org Org, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm not sure who Masterson's buddy is that's being referred to, but. Uh, 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 uh. All right, I'm gonna scroll back up. Victoria? Oh. <laughs> uh. Yes, there's an org in Miami. So in Florida, what, Florida's one of the five biggest states in the U.S., right? I think the five biggest states where half the country actually lives is California, Texas, Florida, New York, and Ohio. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I believe 50% of the U.S. lives in those five states. So Florida, one of the five biggest states in the U.S., and there's only organizations in. Um, I don't remember if there's one in Jacksonville. I don't happen to remember an organ. Uh, so basically, Clearwater, Tampa, Miami, Orlando. I do not remember an org in Tallahassee or Jacksonville. It's weird that there wouldn't be an org in those areas since they're very highly populated areas, actually. Oh, let me get my face back on it. And so, again, Clearwater, Tampa, Orlando, Miami. That's it. 
four, four orgs in the entire state of Florida. Um, you also have Texas. Texas, one of the five biggest states. There's Houston, Austin, Dallas. Houston, Austin, Dallas. I don't remember an org even in El Paso. Houston, Austin, and Dallas. Am I? Oh, Durban. Um, is there an Oregon Durban? There's an Oregon Durban. I remember there being an Oregon Durban. San Antonio. San Antonio is an org. San Antonio, Houston, Austin, Dallas. Four orgs, unless I'm forgetting one, in the entire freaking state of Texas. And they still cannot, there's still not enough Scientologists per org to recruit enough staff members to work at each one of those orgs. You'd think that with only four orgs in the entire state of Texas, there'd be like thousands and thousands of Scientologists per org. Nope. There's really never more than 100 to 200 Scientologists around any organization, even at its, at its like most successful and affluent. Um, okay, scrolling up. I really hope I'm not missing Super Chats, you guys. I'm trying not to. Ooh, Pretoria. I do remember there being an org in Pretoria. My phone seems a little crooked and it's bugging me. I can deal with it, I guess. Oh boy, I think I'm missing Super Chats and I feel really bad about it, you guys. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, um, Rianu Kiev says, so just to confirm, Tony is not a Scientologist. He's just an informant working for them. Rianu Kiev, if you're talking about Tony Pierce, then correct. He is not actually a Scientologist. He's just uh, a local patsy in the community who's been tricked into uh, giving them intel on the protesters. And uh, he's been a very effective spy but his cover's blown now, so uh, not so effective anymore. Oh, in Alabama, someone's saying there's an organization in Birmingham, Alabama. Hmm. I do vaguely remember a Birmingham org, but I think that's because I'm thinking of Birmingham. Isn't there a Birmingham in England? Yeah. I don't think there's an org in Birmingham, Alabama, you guys. If something's showing up on a Google search, it's probably a mission. I don't remember any Scientology in Alabama. Yeah. Ooh, Larry Evans. The Hubbard Dianetics, there's been like, it says the Hubbard Dianetics in Fresno, California has been open for 10 years. Is it safe to say that this person is a predominant person or has lots of money assuming it's a mission? It only costs about $30,000 to open a mission. That's called the Mission Starter Package. Maybe it's $50,000 these days. Um, Okay, open missions. And there ain't no Scientology in Fresno, California. Uh, any official real Scientology, like an org. So yes, if there's a mission there, oh my God, I would feel so bad for whatever Scientologist has been tricked and bullied into opening up a mission in Fresno for the last 10 years. If it says Hubbard Dianetics Foundation on it, it's probably, yeah, it's a mission. Or it might even just be a field group, actually. Um, and I would love to get some photos of that place. If you have any photos or video of the Hubbard Dianetics Center in Fresno, California, you can send it to me at growinguppinscientology at gmail.com and I'll do something with that. Motherhood to menopause is back again. Thanks for all that you do. I have mad respect for you. Well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Um, Beck, oh. Yeah, why is the phone crooked? God, that bugs the shit out of me. Why is it doing that? Bear with me, guys. I'm gonna try to adjust. I don't know, is that better? Can't tell. All right, fine. All right, what do we have here? Oh, guys, um, quick reminder. Across all of YouTube, many channels have been talking about subscribers being auto-unsubscribed. That doesn't seem to me, based on my analytics for my channel, like that's been a problem for me. 
Um, but I just want to mention it because I watch a lot of YouTube myself, you know, my favorite channels, and they keep mentioning this that they keep getting contacted by subscribers that go, hey, I just checked and YouTube unsubscribed me from your channel. So um, anyway, just a reminder, check it out. Make sure you're subscribed. If YouTube unsubscribed you, I'd be, please shoot me a message and tell me because I'd like to get some sense of how often that happens. Um, Natalia says, did you get my email about John Travolta? He caused a big stink in Italy a few weeks ago. <laughs> I did get a lot of messages about this. It seemed like someone sort of played a bit of a prank on John Travolta. And he was at some sort of an awards ceremony in Italy and he was up on stage doing some dance moves with the, the MC of the event. And then they, on camera, took John outside and someone out there taught him how to do what they call the duck dance, which is a dance that Italian social media influencers have been going viral for doing. And it's kind of a silly dance and it makes you look a little silly. And I don't think they told John Travolta exactly what this dance was or why they were having him do it or whether it was gonna be aired. And I guess he thought he looked a bit silly. And he, um, he basically told them they didn't have the rights to rebroadcast that portion of the award ceremony. And this got a lot of press in Italy. <laughs> First, it got a lot of press that they sort of tricked John into doing this stupid TikTok dance which doesn't seem like something that would bother me. Like, I don't know, it seems like John likes doing those kind of things. But then when the, they, he, he demanded that they not rebroadcast it and they respected his wishes, they deleted it from the broadcast, that got a bunch of press as well. I didn't think it rose to the level of doing a video about it, a standalone video about it, but I did get a bunch of uh, messages and emails about it. All right, let's see, let's see. Okay, Love Maddie says, Aaron, did you watch Jeff of PTS for Life go into the Seattle org and they thought he was a never in and they tried to find his ruin, etc." You know, I saw that Jeff sent me a link to a video and that must be what it was. I've been so busy the last few days I haven't even responded to all my text messages and emails and stuff. Um, Jeff has some amazing, Jeff, Jeff's like, in his sweet spot when he goes to these orgs. <laughs> I saw him outside one of the Canadian orgs and you know he knew the people there. So he's telling them, telling them how dirty, how dirty the sign is, how dirty the awning is, how dirty the tent is, the entrance of the building is just dirty and filthy and really bad reflection on Scientology. <laughs> and then the next time Jeff goes back, they had it all cleaned. <laughs> See, who says the streamers don't help Scientology? We're just trying to give them good advice, you know? Let them know how the world sees them and thinks about them. Maybe maybe they can make some changes, you know? All right, let's see. All right, scrolling up. Kimberly Johnson says, I just checked and I was unsubscribed. I was subscribed earlier today and now tonight, I'm not subscribed. There you go, I don't know how to explain it. YouTube being, being goofy. Hit that subscribe button, guys. All right. Oy. Ellen Bitsagio. Bitsagio, something like that. A lot of the guys in La Poubelle looked like imitation ver versions of Beck and Rob Thomas. Did you notice that as well? Yes, they all seem to be very emo rockerish in there. Yes, I do agree with that. Okay. Oh, I don't know how to say this name. Macht, it's German, right? Macht, Mirdo Kalhegel, Macht. I can't say it, guys, I'm doing my best. And we're getting a little bumpy here on the freeway. I used to live about half, I used to live about half from the Dusseldorf org and didn't even know that it existed. 
I wonder if you mean half mile, half kilometer, or half hour. Either way, not only is there an org there, it's a celebrity center. Celebrity Center Dusseldorf. Now, when I was in Scientology and I first heard about the Celebrity Center of Dusseldorf, I thought somebody was making a joke because I'd never heard of Dusseldorf. I didn't know how the hell a city I'd never heard of could or would have a celebrity center in it. But that's just me, guys. I grew up in a cult. I realized Dusseldorf is a real city with real people and perhaps, some may say, real celebrities. <laughs> okay. Interesting Ideas says, there is a life improvement center in Plant City, Florida, and a mission in Ocala, Florida. Thanks, John Travolta. Yes, John Travolta's money is what keeps the Ocala missions doors open, and Plant City is actually an extension of the Tampa Org. The Tampa Org is located in Ybor City, and Plant City is an extension of that org. So the, the Plant City Life Improvement Center is not a mission. It's actually an extension of the org. Okay, let's see. Hannah, I see your question about what is the difference between a mission and an org. I did answer that question earlier in the video, so I would suggest that you watch the replay, and I'll do chapter breaks later on. Okay, corn, wait, 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 wait. I can't read the day. Corn Freak 4874 says, please shout out Chicago Scientology Audit. Shannon, so we can get a protest going for this Sunday. Okay, well, let's do it. Um, Chicago Scientology Audit. Her name is Shannon. So guys, when we're done here, Google or look up on YouTube, Chicago Scientology Audit, and uh, subscribe over there. That'll be awesome. Oh, the duck dance. Yes, Trogol's duck dance. Duck, 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 duck. <laughs> All right, I'll go back down to the bottom. Okay, 24 hours in, says Vancouver, Canada. It would make sense that they own the building as I walk by it regularly when I am there. And there's just one woman there. I think I've seen all of five people in there at one point. Yeah, Vancouver has always been a small, failing Scientology organization. And again, the way they keep it open is that Scientology, Scientology will um, eventually step in and pay the utility bills if they have to, to keep an org from having its power turned off or its water turned off. Um, yeah, not a, not a successful org. Okay, um, Macht. I want to be able to pronounce this right, but the car's bouncing around too much. It's the nature of the freeway. Uh, macht. Okay, I'm gonna keep trying because I got nothing. I got nowhere to be and nothing better to do. Macht. Mirdokal. Well, that's as close as we're gonna get for now, fellas. Okay. Dusseldorf is ridiculously expensive real estate wise, by the way, and the Celebrity Center makes somewhat sense with Cologne being close and being a film city. Oh, is Cologne a film city? Okay, that does make sense. You'd think there would just be an organization in Cologne, but uh, what do I know, guys? The seventh son, nine of nine, says, I'm not the most deadly person, but I've heard of Dusseldorf. <laughs> well, guys, I've heard of Dusseldorf as well. But when I was a 13-year-old kid, I'd never heard of Dusseldorf, and I thought it was a joke. <laughs> but ever since then, yes, I've heard of Dusseldorf. Okay, Sydney Mo says, I want to protest at the Times Square organization, but I don't want to go alone. Suggestions? Also, thank you for all you do. You are my intro to SPTV, and I'm glad to be a never-in SP. Awesome, Sydney Mo. Well, I'll tell you what, I promoted a channel on my community tab yesterday, um, Reggie Pie, P-E-I, um, 
is looking to stream in New York, and I promoted that channel. So I think he got about 500 subscribers, so he's ready. He's ready to stream. And, um, yeah. I'll tell you what, guys. One of the best things that I would recommend, let's say your live streaming isn't up and running, go to the org and shoot some video, and then upload that video to your channel. Um, what I probably want to be careful about doing is promoting channels that have no content on them yet. I, what, I, what I think I want to do is promote channels that when you go to the channel, you can tell that they've already been doing some Scientology content. And if that just means going to your org and filming and doing whatever you would normally do on a live stream, but because your live stream isn't enabled yet, just do exactly the same thing, but just do it on a recorded video and then upload the video to your channel. Because I'm happy to promote any channels that are actually going to be streaming and protesting. Um, and so far, I think we've been fine. I don't think we've promoted any BS channels, but I'm just saying, I, I do expect that I'll probably get inundated with more and more requests to promote channels. And part of my screening process will probably become, hey, at least get two or three short videos up there showing uh, that you're out there doing the work and able to do the work. And it's not a, it's not a one-off thing. It's not a you know, once a month thing, but it's more of a regular thing. Oh, Macht, Macht, Mir do Kogal says, Dusseldorf is the state capital. And they usually stick to the state capitals in Germany. I guess that's why it's Dusseldorf. You know what? That never even occurred to me. I didn't, I'm gonna make a very ignorant statement, guys. And I don't know if it's because I'm an American or if it's because I grew up in a cult. But it didn't occur to me that Germany had states. <laughs> This, I think this is something that I have at one point known and I totally forgot. It didn't even occur to me that Germany had states. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, Lord Kiss Freak says, Aaron, I sent you an email about Danny Masterson with a link last week. Just wondering if you got it. Well, Lord Kiss Freak, I probably got 100 emails about Danny with links. So unless, I don't remember getting an email from Lord Kiss Freak, if that's what you mean. But if it was from another name, I would never have known it. I literally get hundreds of emails about Danny Masters in a week. Um, yeah. Summer Savage says, Macht, I enjoy watching you drop knowledge on Aaron. Wunderbar. Yes. Macht. Uh, let's see. Okay, Irrelevant Panda says, Dumb question, but how in the hell do Sea members afford to smoke on $47 a week? <laughs> Luckily, I never smoked in the Sea Org, so I don't have firsthand experience with making that work. Um, some Sea Org members have access to family and they get a bit of an allowance. Maybe they have some credit cards or whatever. Because uh, let's be real. You can't really, you shouldn't be able to afford to smoke on $47 a week. But if you're a smoker and smoking is your priority, you could probably get away with spending all $47 on cigarettes and figure out how to scrounge and steal anything else that you needed. It depends on how much of a priority those cigarettes are. I even knew some people at Flag who would take cigarettes out of, who would take partially smoked cigarettes out of ashtrays and just finish smoking them because that's how broke they were and that's how addicted to nicotine they were. And it's gross. And yes, that person might have been Crystal Hollinan from the Toronto org. It might or might not have been. She may have been picking cigarettes just straight out of the trash cans and smoking them. And, you know, uh, she wasn't the only one. Let's just say that. <laughs> not me, though. I wasn't a smoker. I didn't have to worry about that. Uh... <laughs> Crystal Hollinan is a very well-known Scientologist in Canada. She's from the Toronto org. Uh, Jennifer Davidson was her sister-in-law. Jennifer was at Flag as well and, and also um, a smoker, but yeah. Crystal's someone I wish would leave Scientology. Jennifer too. All right, let's see. All right, guys. Hillary Murphy says they only have two protesters in Chicago for March 3rd. Who is in the area who can help? Interesting. Maybe I can put out, uh, maybe I can do a video asking for more people to 
to step up in Chicago. Um, I should get in touch with the people who are already there. Well, see, that's the thing. And that's actually, like, there's already two or three streamers in Chicago, right? So I'm sure those people have thousands of views on their videos. Um, so I guess I would just hope that anyone who's doing that, those kind of videos is regularly asking other people to join them. Because that's like the way for it to work most organically. And, um, but anyway, I'm, I'm happy to help out. I'm happy to help out. Uh, okay, Marty Kingshot says, I'll keep a lookout for Crystal and Jennifer in Toronto. <laughs> yes. Uh, I heard that Poe on the Go might make it to Chicago. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be fantastic. Um, Cor... Corcola says, Aaron, do a video of how Danny Masterson was transported to a nice prison where everyone is over 65 and he's being treated like a nonviolent criminal when he is a serial rapist. It's not fair. Yes, I have to catch up on some of the, um, the Danny Masterson info that's being reported by JD Delay and uh, Collective Clips. And oh, I just went blank on the two other channels. Oh, I feel so bad. Oh, that other guy, I always forget his name. Um, I, I saw a few more videos have come out over the last few days and I gotta freshen up on what's going on. And if there's anything new, I will share it with all you guys for show. Okay. Abigail, okay, last try. Aaron, are you gonna connect with Sterling while you're there? So Sterling was working yesterday. Sterling lives in the valley. Uh, short answer, I don't, Sterling and I aren't gonna be able to connect on this trip. So we'll probably connect on the next trip. And, um, but I did get together, uh, as you saw, Nathan joined us. Um, Sterling's, um, Sterling's brother, Nathan joined us. And of course, Jenna was there. And um, yeah, we just gotta make it happen with Sterling. Sterling lives far enough away that it's always like super inconvenient for him to try to join. <laughs> and also he's got so many sports always going on. What he's always doing baseball or softball or tennis or volleyball or just, uh, you know, flexing in the mirror. One, one of many of those things. <laughs> I'm teasing him. Uh, all right, let's see. Lexi Evans says, what are some good sayings for a sign involving Dianetics since it's a Dianetics Foundation. Well, Dianetics Foundation is really, it's still a church of science, it's still a Scientology mission. There's no such thing as a purely Dianetics Foundation. Some missions will call themselves Dianetics Foundations because it's easier to trick someone to come in for Dianetics than it is to trick them to come in for Scientology. Scientology has more name recognition. Also, Dianetics isn't really a religion, Scientology is. In the real world, they're the same thing. But Dianetics, when it was written, was a mental science and it wasn't religious at all. And then Scientology came later. So some of these Scientology missions will call themselves Dianetics centers, but it's still a Scientology mission. And um, I just don't have any good ideas for a sign right now. Apologies for that. All right, let's see, what else? What else? I'll probably wrap it up here soon, guys. Scrolling up. Scrolling up very slowly. Okay, I see some people talking about emailing me. You can always reach me at growingupinscientology at gmail.com. I do see all my emails, even if I don't respond to all of them. But um, if I haven't gotten back to you, just email me again, please, okay? Oh, interesting idea says, I think there is still an organ in uh, Puerto Rico. Yes, there is an organ in Puerto Rico. 
And um, the wealthy Scientologist who owned that building um, has actually left Scientology. There's a whole crazy story about that that I won't try to rehash right here, but um, there's definitely still an org in Puerto Rico. That's an org org, it's a real org, it's owned by the mother church, it will never close down even if there's no one there. They will send Sea Org members there to man the reception desk and keep the lights on if they have to before they will ever let the Puerto Rico org close. I would love to see some protesters at the Puerto Rico org. I don't know what the laws are in Puerto Rico surrounding protesting. Actually, Puerto Rico is a, what do they call it? It's a US territory, right? So uh, I assume they have the same First Amendment protection of um, the media and protests and everything. So uh, yeah, give that a shot unless the rules prevent it, but. Okay, okay. Oh, Chow Yun Smut. Aaron, I hope to hear from you about the cruise. We've got a week left to get those deposits in. Yes, 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 yes. I've been racking my brain about this cruise. On the one hand, I very much want to go. On the other hand, eight days is a really long cruise. And the last time I went on a seven-day cruise, I said, that was a mistake. That was way too long. So I'm still coming to terms with whether I can commit to this and also I always struggle planning six months in advance because I usually don't plan two days in advance um, so yes apologies for not getting back to you on that email yet chow yun smut but um, I got to make a decision here very soon so I will I will I will I will I promise all right let's see let's see guys well it's getting a little harder for me to find questions and uh and we've been going for 77 minutes so why don't we just call it a wrap on this tonight you guys this is a nice good experiment it's fun to be able to do this from the car kill some travel time get a chance to talk to you guys i didn't get a video done today so this was confident chris is still in the house guys if you're not subscribed to confident chris uh look him up on youtube him and him and Hellcat and uh, Jessica and LA Cam and Danny and Leah and Easy Quick and all these guys out in LA have been doing an absolutely amazing job and it's just so much fun to be able to come out and uh, hang out with them every now and then and I can't wait to can't wait to do it can't wait till the next time we can do it all right let's see all right guys we're gonna call it a wrap on that how about that Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And uh, I don't have my little cute little Brisbane outro, so I won't even ask you to watch until the very end. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.